Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope everyone slept well, um, is having a good morning so far. I hope everyone had a good day yesterday. Um, I did wake up with a song in my head, which is no surprise. I always wake up with music in my head. But today, it was pretty poignant. <laughs> the universe was kind of like being very tongue-in-cheek with me this morning because the song that I woke up with is Fembot by Robin. I am a huge Robin fan, huge Robin fan. She just released an album, or, well, you could say it's an EP, called Honey. If you haven't heard it, check it out. It's different, but still Robin-y and still very good. Um, and she's going to be at MSG, Madison Square Garden, in March. And I have every intention of going. Guys, tickets go on sale tomorrow. You know my ass is waking up super early. Well, I wake up really early anyway. But I'm buying tickets. I'm going to that concert. Anyway, the song Fembot. I've got some news for you. Fembots have feelings too. <laughs> and it goes on. But she... Um, she basically compares herself to a robot. Uh, it's it's really cute. It's really clever. I'm sure many of you know it. It's it's kind of old now. She released that back in, I want to say, like 2010, 2011, as part of the Body Talk collection. Um, but it was poignant because yesterday, we, we're, getting, we're getting a lot of waves right now, guys. Waves um, that are helping us ascend, yes. But... Um, upgrade okay and yesterday I was talking to guacamole many of you know of guacamole she's a good friend of mine she's a, she is a viewer here on my channel but she was just explaining to me like you know what she was experiencing she was very tired she was having really vivid dreams she was getting ringing in her ears every once in a while and I was explaining to her that well yes we are getting some major big big waves um, and for me I have been dreaming quite vividly consecutively, like the last three nights in a row, I've been dreaming. And I don't dream regularly. Um, and I don't, even when I do dream, I, there are a lot of times where I don't remember what they were. Um, but the last three nights, I've been having dreams and I've been, they've been very vivid and I've been remembering them as I woke up in the morning. But then the biggest thing for me was, or is, um, the ringing in my ears. Now, I have always experienced ringing in my ears ever since I was a little kid, very, very young child. Um, and so it's something that I'm used to and it's something I've be become accustomed to and actually I quite appreciate because, you know, I'm still connected. I, I take it as like evidence that I'm still connected and I'm still ascending and blah, blah, blah. And I'm still getting these upgrades. But this time, guys, the ringing has been off the chain. Like, it's been so high-pitched and intense and piercing that it has literally stopped me in my tracks. There was one point yesterday where I was sitting in class um, and it just hit me. And it was so loud and it was prolonged too. Like I literally had to like stop what I was doing. I was listening to music working on, um, you know, an assignment for class and I had to literally stop and just let the ringing go because it was so intense so there are a lot we're getting a lot of upgrades right now guys a lot of downloads are coming through um, so if you're feeling extra tired if you're experiencing the extreme ringing because it is the, just like Aluna said just like Aluna Ash said it's a huge huge wave it's big and it's hitting now. She said it was going to be hitting between the 4th and the 7th. Well, today is the 7th. And it really started yesterday, the 6th, for me. Um, no, I'm sorry. Today's the 8th. Well, it started yesterday. But then also she said it could be, it could be you know, slightly different um, depending on where you are, depending on your location. And for the last three days, it's been hitting me. So you got, a lot of you might be going through that too. So if you're super tired... Uh, extra tired even though you're getting extra rest continue to get extra rest if you can um, the ringing in the ears is happening you know you could be going through some purging because of this um, your body you could be going through some body symptoms I know yesterday yesterday um, my intestines my like my intestines felt like they were really sore now granted that was something else too <laughs> this is so crazy um, well, it's not really crazy, but I made the mistake of on Monday night, I was 
redoing my nails and I decided to order a pizza and just as I finished my nails the pizza came and so I was eating my pizza and a, <laughs> my tooth scraped one of my nails and I ended up eating a bunch of nail polish <laughs> which <laughs> which is probably why my intestines were so screwed up yesterday but I got through it everything's fine but I don't even know why I'm telling you guys that <laughs> anyway um yeah waves are happening okay so there's that so now this is just going to be a general energy reading for Thursday November 8th again like I always say like we all always say as we do these daily readings energy is fluid just because these readings are coming through at this specific date doesn't mean they have to resonate right now. They could resonate later. They could have resonated in the past, um, and now that's coming through and you're getting some clarity on it. Either way, just settle in, you know, have some coffee, get cool, get cozy, relax. We're just having a conversation with the universe today, okay? Just like every day. So general energy reading, it's not science specific, it's not love or career specific, it's just the messages that spirit wants to bring forward for us for some clarity in our lives at this moment in time, okay? Excuse me. Okay, so without further ado, let's get to it. He, my favorite mug. Okay, here we go. Hi, spirit. <laughs> Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Thursday, November 8th, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. Um, so I'm seeing a combination of orange and yellow here. This could be a continuation of the drive that we're feeling yesterday. Um, there could be some more emotions involved today. I'm seeing, I'm seeing the two of them as a recalibration, and that would make perfect sense, you know, with the waves that are coming through and um, all of like the the purgy ascension symptoms we are all feeling. Hmm. Thursday, November 8th, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. Oh, now I'm seeing red. Okay. Yeah, now see, that's really talking about... Um, what's the word I just used? Well, anyway... It's getting down into the root of things. Recalibration. There it is. Yeah. Okay, so the energy waves are really being grounded right now. So if you're feeling super tired, if you're needing extra rest, take it. Okay? I was talking to Betsy yesterday, and I was saying to her, I just felt I felt like hell. And she was like, Eric, you need to take a break. And I was like, Ugh, fine, Mom. Fine. <laughs> so I did it. I, went, I, I had dinner plans with a very good friend of mine and I said, I'm sorry, love, but I have to I have to reschedule because I feel like hell and she was like totally like get that rest and so that's what I did. I went home, I did one reading, I made dinner early and I was in bed by like eight thirty. And it was really helpful. So recalibration is happening right now, guys. The universe is saying that they it is happening in a, in some pretty major ways. So if you need to rest, please take the time to do so. Okay, because it's only going to help you as you integrate this this new this new resonant pattern is how I want to put it. This new resonant state of being, this upgraded state of being. Because even Missy of Saltwater Hills Tarot was channeling that you know we're getting DNA upgrades. Well, you got to give your body some time to integrate them, right? Thursday, November 8th. And now I'm seeing brown. So yeah, there's a need to be grounded, okay? Get grounded. If you need to get out into nature, get out into nature. Spend some time outside. It's still not that cold out here. I'm in the Northeast. Um, it's still not that cold out, although in the Midwest, I know you guys got snow recently. But if you can, 
go for it. Even if it's just walking outside, you know, bundled up, taking in the fresh air, go for it. But you have to, but yes, you have to get grounded right now. This is necessary to help this integration process, okay? Okay, cool. Thursday, November 8th. Let's see what you've got for us, universe. Thursday, November 8th. Thursday, November 8th. All right, there's the Empress, y'all. The Empress, we've got the Five of Swords in reverse. I like that. I like it a lot. All right, so we are only seven days from the end of Venus in retrograde. Now, that doesn't, don't get me wrong, she is going to be in shadow period. Okay, she is gonna be in shadow period, but the retrograde is coming to an end, y'all. Fucking right, we've got the Queen of Pentacles, we've got the Two of Swords in reverse, we've got the Seven of Wands, I'm going to pull one more time. One more. Thursday, November 8th. There we go. Oh, goodness. Okay. Well, we got a lot today. All right. Underneath the deck, we've got the Nine of Wands. Perseverance. In this deck, it's stamina. All right? Um, and it's funny because Jesus is depicted on this card, and... I've never really understood why. At the moment, though, I'm getting, you know, he never gave up. Uh, wow. This has a lot to do with belief and faith, in my opinion. At least that's just what I'm channeling at this moment. Um, he never gave up. Even though they crucified him, left him for dead, persecuted him, he never gave up. And so we are just as much a ch of child, children of God as Jesus is and was. So we don't need to give up either. Wowie, wow, wow. Whoa. You guys. I don't even know where to begin with this. But also, first of all, let me tell you, we've got the emperor here. We have the emperor and the empress. I'm going to be... I, I want to... Reorganize this a little bit. Okay, this is going to go here. This is going to go here. And it's funny because I've been doing readings for myself lately, and the Emperor and the Empress are coming out together a lot. All right, so we've got the counterparts. Queen of Pentacles is going to go here. We've got Justice. We've got the Ten of Wands. Woo -wee. We've got the Devil, the Moon, and the Knight of Swords. My, my, is this a big reading for the day. <laughs> this is a huge reading. Um, so the Queen of Pentacles came out yesterday. All right. And this is Capricorn energy. Now, Betsy explained it to me yesterday as to why um, why this the things were kind of a little bit backwards, at least as I was seeing it. But um, thank you for explaining that to me, Betsy. It makes complete sense now. Whereas the queen energy is cardinal, the king energy is fixed. And that makes perfect sense. Because even though the masculine energy is like the go-getter, masculine energies tend to be very, very fixed, very set in their ways. Whereas, and so then the queen, the, the feminine energy is cardinal very much a go-getter herself, but more in a pioneering kind of way. And that's, that's just how I've come to understand it. But good Lord, this is a huge reading, guys. <laughs> um, we have the emperor and we have the empress. Okay. And to me, this is talking about balance. And this balance is coming through with these upgrades that we're receiving, right? Okay, that's excellent. I mean, there's really nothing else to say about that at the moment. Um, 
So I'm going to break this. I'm breaking this up into three different scenarios. However, they all they're all kind of interconnected. But okay, so the two of swords and the five of swords are in reverse here, and then we have the seven of wands. So there is an energy of no longer being indecisive, of no longer um, wanting to be in this shit starter energy potentially, um, no longer wanting to be. Releasing any sort of self-destructive energy. Shit starter energy, okay? Um, Angelic Guidance 333 put out a reading yesterday, a message yesterday about wolves and sheep's clothing. And I was just passively listening to it, you know, as, um, as I got home from, as I was on my way home from class yesterday. And it definitely resonated with me to a certain extent. Um, but it was something that I had already kind of come to an awareness of. It was just talking about, you know, people around you that basically gaslight you, uh, that, you know, you've been so generous to, you've really done a lot for, you've been there for, and then, you know, basically once these people catch you slipping, then they're going to call you out on it and completely forget about all the times that, you know, you were there for them and generous to them and giving to them and they'll just like the moment you stand up for yourself or whatever um in some sort of face of adversity the moment you stand up for yourself the moment is that's the moment that they're going to you know tear you down or or harp on you and completely forget about all of the stuff that you've done for them and that's the energy that i'm getting here and it's so funny because she says that was happening in the spirit world and the physical world and my dreams last night were just were all about that Last night, um, I the, my dreams were pretty dark. Uh, there was a lot of conflict. Um, there were a lot. There were a few moments where I was literally separating my, myself from the environment that I was in, removing myself from the environment that I was in because of narcissistic, nasty, narcissistic, manipulative, sociopathic energy. Uh, and so that's what this is depicted here. The two of swords in reverse, the five of swords in reverse. The two of swords about it is like being indecisive. It's like, well, I don't know. Should I really, like, should I really leave this behind? Should I really let go of this? I mean, these, these person, these people are X, Y, and Z to me or this, that, and the other thing. The five of swords reversed is like, no, releasing this conflict. Like, I'm not going to do that. And the seven of wands is standing up for yourself, putting forward boundaries. And that's literally what I was doing in my, in my dream last night. Now, in Angelic Guidance's message, she was like, don't stand up for yourselves, just play stupid. And I get it. I get that. But then I was just saying, in my dream, in my dreams, it was just like me like saying, absolutely not. I'm not doing this. You need to get away from me, or I need to get myself the F up out of here, because this is some bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, next scenario. We have the Queen of Pentacles, Justice, and the Ten of Wands. So even though some a lot of us are standing in this Queen of Pentacles state, and the, the key word here for the Queen of Pentacles is ambition. All right? And so what's going on here is some of us, a lot of us that are standing in this Queen of Pentacles state, we're feeling kind of burdened with the Ten of Wands. Um, this could be if you are just like taking care, you're handling everything on your own in your life. I'm picking up for some of that. Because there's a lot of us that are really just have taken on the role of masculine and feminine in our lives. And that is definitely, I mean, we have both of them. Um, and our goal is to balance them. But there's a lot of us that are doing like everything. Doing extra or feeling just like feeling like we have to do everything on our own. But that's only temporary because justice is coming into play here, okay? It's about, and so with the key, with the, you know, with the, um, the on, underneath the energy, the overall energy, excuse me, the overall un, uh, energy is the nine of wands, perseverance. You just got to keep going, all right? Because, I mean, the ten of wands is about burdens. It's about potentially releasing burdens, needing to release burdens, but it's also a completion. I just heard you carried the weight, you're on your own for long enough. Now it's time to let justice be served. Okay, now here's the challenge with that because we have the moon and the devil 
underneath that, right? We are entering a moon, uh, on, we're in the new moon energy right now. Um, we're, we're, we're entering into, we're going to be having, you know, the new moon here. So the new moon is probably going to help you release. Well, new moons are not about releasing. New moons are about um, planting seeds. Now, the devil could be talking about Capricorn. Okay. Wait, 16. Is 16 the devil? I think so. Give me a second, guys. Let me just... I think 16 is the devil. Or is this the tower? Oh, wait a second. Is this the tower? It is the tower. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, well, okay. I like that much better <laughs> than the devil. Aha! Now this makes much more sense. Okay, so we have the Devil, the Moon, and the Knight of Swords. And the Knight of Swords um, is about communication. Now, what I'm getting here, especially with the Devil, around the New Moon, or after the New Moon, or just the energies of the New Moon, are going to bring in some sort of tower moment that could be disruptive for you, um, or it could be creative. Like the tower is Mars energy, that's creativity. And ugh, so crazy, guys. I was doing just uh, a reading for myself yesterday, last night before I went to bed, and I was using multiple decks, and the tower came out twice. And when it came out the second time, it flew out of the deck and landed on the tower of the other deck. It was the craziest thing ever. <laughs> it was so funny. But... The, yeah, there are some tower moments coming. And in some cases, this could be um, a tower moment in the sense that you could receive some sort of communication here with the Knight of Swords. It could be really swift, coming in unexpectedly, very abrupt. There might be, for some of you, it might be challenging in nature. For some of you, not for everybody. But for others of you, I feel like the majority of it is just, it's a tower situation because it's not something that you were expecting. It was completely out of left field. <laughs> completely out of left field. And with the emperor and the empress here, we, are, we do have the counterparts to the situation. Now, you could resonate with all three of these. You could resonate with one of them. It doesn't matter. These could, this could be three different scenarios, or it just could be the scenario of your life right now. I know I'm resonating with a lot of it. I do, I'm going to start, I'm going to get to the clarifiers now, but I want to start with the Queen of Pentacles and the Ten of Wands, because I feel like there's something that we're missing, that I'm missing here. Pentacles, the Ten of Wands, and Justice. Just, I'm hearing justice is going to be served in the near future. You have a counterpart coming, okay, and you just feel you just feel burdened right now. But also, those burdens have a lot to do with the upgrades that we're getting, okay. Now let's get this clarified. Ju uh, justice, the Queen of Pentacles, and the Ten of Wands, please. Ooh, ooh, that's a lot. All right. Ooh. Is this all? No, it's not. Okay, so underneath the deck is the Ten of Cups. And the Ten of Cups is reversed. So this is why and it, it fell out that way, like it fell out of the deck that way. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it that way, okay? This is not a bad thing. This is just a blockage. It just means that it's not the right time for it right now. And that makes perfect sense. Because what I was channeling with the Queen of Pentacles was someone getting into... Oh, wow. Look. Okay. Someone getting into um, wifey mode. Being the mother figure. Or aligning with someone that's in getting into wifey mode. Now, this could be you. If you are the Queen of Pentacles, I often appear as the Queen of Pentacles, or at least I often think of myself as the Queen of Pentacles. Um, but 
Queen of Pentacles also is Capricorn energy. But also lately, I've been kind of more King of Pentacles. Anyway, <laughs> um, either you're aligning with this type of energy, either you're aligning with it or you're embodying it. Either way, both of you could be feeling burdened right now, but justice is coming into play, okay? Now, the clarifiers. And it's so crazy because I've been I've been clarifying recently with two diff with multiple decks and the same cards have been clarifying what I've been trying to clarify. You've got the Ten of Wands and the Seven of Wands. And on both of these are reversed. Now, in this case, with the reversals, with the Ten of Wands and the Seven of Wands, and the Ten the Ten and the Seven of Wands, releasing of the burdens is at play, All right? Releasing of the defense mechanisms too. Something is, with justice coming here, I do, I'm gonna clarify justice. Oh, oh my. All right, here's the deal. This is why these cards came out reversed. <laughs> this is why these cards came out reversed. All right, so really underneath the deck, you have the Page of Swords. Somebody could be watching the other, all right? And guess who that someone would be? The King of Pentacles. There's the counterpart. Don't turn these right side up. Okay, but these are going to be right side up and that includes the Ten of Cups, the Nine of Wands, again, the Nine of Wands, Perseverance, and the Fool. So this is definitely a continuation of the message from yesterday. All right? Now, for some of you, and this is why I'm being told not to turn these right side up. For some of you, you need to release your defenses, okay? You're, you are actively carrying these burdens, which is keeping you from coming into alignment with this new beginning this ultimate emotional fulfillment and your counterpart in the King of Pentacles. We have two instances of, the king, uh, of counterparts here. The King and Queen of Pentacles, the Emperor and the Empress. We could be talking, we, we could, we absolutely could be talking twin flames because the Emperor and the Empress are the depictions of the Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine. But it doesn't have to be that, okay? This really could just be the balance within yourself or counterparts that are meant to be together that embody this divine masculine, divine feminine energy. Everybody has got, ac everybody has access to it. So to even say that you're twin flames anymore to me is just like obsolete. It's not an elitist club, you guys, it's not. It's literally just a label, okay? But for those of you who, who it resonates with, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Honestly, I'm even reluctant to even say that anymore. Anyway, but in order to in order to really align with this, now this I'm picking up that it's, this this could actively be this King of Pentacles here. It could be the King of Pentacles that is going through the process of letting down the defenses, letting down the guard, and starting to release the burdens. Okay, and so that could be why the counterpart in the Queen of Wands might be feeling the burdens, because the King of Pentacles, the 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 counterpart, is in the process of actively releasing it. All right, but either way, you have Nine of Wands energy. Just keep going, persevere. But someone, somebody's watching someone here, keeping a close eye out. Page of Swords, all right? Now, this also could be energy of uh, understanding what's going on in your life to see what needs to be released, okay? The Page of Swords is the investigator, is the, is the spy. So this person, you could be watching each other, to be quite honest. King and Queen of Pentacles, you could be watching each other. <laughs> But also, that could be the energy of what's 
needed to uh, finding out what needs to be released. Okay. But defenses are dissolving with the seven of rods in reverse. Okay. Next, I'm going to clarify. You know what? I'm going to save that for last. Let's go. Let's go up to the two of swords, the two and the five of swords in reverse, and the seven of wands. Two of swords and seven of all of that. All of that. <sighs> Jesus Christmas. <laughs> That's a lot of cards, guys. Take them. They're saying okay. Underneath the deck, you have the eight of wands. Now. Clear and concise communication. Swift movement, all right? This is debt. Now, remember, this row was the row that was talking about releasing individual. This is like half the deck, guys. Jeez Louise. Okay. Just do it, they're saying. All right, fine. <laughs> this could be a long video. We're already 30 minutes in. Um, clear and concise communication. So this was the row where I was telling you, talking about releasing the wolves in sheep's clothing. Well, here you go. There's that release. You got the, you got the death. You got Scorpio energy here, all right? And Scorpio season, I'm getting Scorpio season is really helping you do this. Looky here, y'all. You've got the Queen of Pentacles again, all right? Now, the Queen of Pentacles is very stern. She don't take no shit. She's very much like the Queen of Swords, only she's much, much more compassionate. She has more, her emotions are more into, are more invested in the situation, okay? But this is that energy of cutting out and here's how situations are mirroring, are, are like blending in together. This is the energy of cutting out the burdens, releasing the burdens. Boop. Why? Because somebody or some people in the situation were pages. They weren't really giving much, all right? And it was, and there was a lot of confusion. Yeah, all right, now I get, now I get why I'm redoing all these cards. There was a lot of confusion when it came to the situation. It's like, well, wait, these people are giving something to me and they meant something to me or something like that, you know, but they're not giving much. It's just a page of cups energy here. And there was confusion. There was indecisiveness. In many cases, some of you feel, feel or felt if you haven't, if you cut yourself out or if, unless, either you cut yourself out or you're in the process of doing so. But either way, there was a feeling of entrapment to a certain extent. All right, but that's changing with death, okay? That's changing with the Wheel of Fortune. You've got the Two of Swords here. Wow, you've got the here, so, the, so the, that's changing. This is, wow, this is a lot. <laughs> you've got the Two of Swords and the Wheel of Fortune. So to me, even though in this deck, this woman's eyes are closed, but in this deck, this feels a lot more like a decision has been made. And it's not, it's more about using the intuition than it is about any sort of physical representation. Because often, if you're relying on what you're experiencing in the physical, in the 3D, that can be manipulative in nature. So it's very much like that situation where you know, you, you're, you're fighting the, the evildoer, <laughs> you're fighting the, 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 the bad guy, and they have superpowers, and they can clone themselves, and they split up into all these different versions of themselves, identical versions of themselves, and you have to find the real one. Well, what do you do? Do you rely on your eyes, or do you rely on your intuition? Aha, your intuition. So now here, with the Wheel of Fortune and the Two of Swords, this is saying to me, especially since the Two of Swords is in reverse here, originally, and I was saying to you, that's coming out of indecisiveness, right? A decision has been made to cut something out, and the wheel is changing, okay? Uh, the cycle is changing, the wheel is turning. You have the King of Rods, the Hierophant, and the Knight of Rods. So this ultimately is allowing someone to come in. The more you can disconnect from the status quo, the more that you honor yourself, the more that you take your lessons in life and move forward with them, the more space you clear for your ships to come in and 
your wishes to come true. Three of Rods and the Star. Now, the other thing that I'm getting here is um, there is a process of waiting right now for your ships to come in as healing is done. Because you, look, you've cut, and e this doesn't even have to be in the physical realm. Even if this is just in the spiritual realm, if you are cutting yourself off from entities or energies that are narcissistic in nature, that are manipulative in nature, that are sociopathic in nature, and yes, this can exist. It does exist in the spirit realm, guys. I mean, it existed in the spirit realm first. It's not like this is something that came, that was invented in 3D reality. New. No. <laughs> I mean, it came out in 3D reality. Yes, it became apparent in 3D reality, but that's because of the duality that we're experiencing here. That's because of the manipulation of the of beings in the fourth dimension that are keeping us in these low vibrational en energies, right? But yes, these energies, these energies do exist in the spiritual. And so now we're going through a process of learning how to release ourselves from that. And you have the high priestess and the hanged man here. So this is using your intuition, like I said, with the two of swords. Using your intuition. And you've been, for some, many of us, you've been, we've been in somewhat of a precarious situation anyway with the, uh, you know, but this is reaching enlightenment. This was, this was being in this slightly uncomfortable state. But, but in order to reach enlightenment, in order to gain enlightenment on the situation, um, in order to receive the downloads and hear the secret whispers of yourself, your spirit, your soul, your higher self of the universe, okay? But this is also an energy of, for some of you, just like um, Angelic Guidance said, play the fool. Don't show your cards too quickly. Play, act like you don't really know what's going on. Don't allow someone to manipulate you into giving them a reason to now cut you down or harp on you or whatever, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Finally, we're going to, we're going to clarify the tower, the moon and the knight of swords, please. The tower, the moon, Woo! the ace of swords. All right. Underneath the deck, you've got the Queen of Swords here. Okay. Um, wow. Okay, you got the Ace of Swords and the Nine of Swords. So far, this Tower moment is going to bring forward, it could really bring forward some um, information I feel like some of you are afraid of this truth here. And so you might be refusing to look at it, but the tower is going to come forward and like not, you're not going to be able to escape from it really. And I don't want to scare anybody with that, but some of you might be afraid to communicate because you have the Knight of Swords here. Some of you might be afraid to communicate your truth. Now you have three cards that fell out over here. Huh. Wow. So, okay. This is definitely connected to this counterpart situation that's going on in the middle of the row here. You have the Three of Swords in reverse with the Seven of Swords in reverse and the Queen of Cups. Queen of Cups to me is Cancer energy. Okay, and also, Cancer is a cardinal sign. Queens are cardinal energy. So there you go. Now, especially since this fell over here where the King of Pentacles is, and I was saying to you that I really feel like oh, the, 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 the counterpart in this situation that is embodying the King of Pentacles energy is the one that's really going through this period of really releasing a lot of burdens, okay? So... Here we go. That makes perfect sense. Over this new moon, there's going to be a tower moment. And that could really lead to some communication, right? But I'm also seeing this Knight of Swords in as going in and fighting the battle and cutting out the demons, the darkness, the destruct, whatever. Just cutting things out that no longer serve. 
this is one of those this is one of those times where the Knight of Swords energy is actually kind of beneficial that I feel like because it's using its destructive capabilities in order to serve the highest good of those involved and that would be to cut out what no longer serves you have three of swords and the three of and the seven of pentacles in reverse all right <clears throat> so someone could be coming out of a heartbreaking situation someone could have gone through a breakup um or whatever just whatever is a heartbreaking situation and they finally learned from it okay the seven of pentacles in reverse is saying to me that they're no longer analyzing things why because they've got the truth and the clarity that they need to understand the situation and to move forward. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean there isn't any anxiety surrounding the situation because I'm hearing like, well, what has it happens again? And with the Queen of Pentacles, oh, I'm sorry, with the Queen of Cups here, the Queen of Cups is someone that is very much emotional. She knows her emotions. She's a psychic. She's intuitive. Okay. But she does not communicate them very often. She holds on to them. And this is another reason why I really feel like the Queen of Cups is Cancer energy because Cancers, when they get all up in their feelings, they tend to go into their shell and not want to come out. And I know that for a fact because my moon is in Cancer and I, have, I am very much like that. But this is also someone that has deep feelings, deep emotions. And I feel like is very much in love at this, at this time. But see, they might be coming to terms with that. My ear is ringing again. And it's my left one this time. Usually yesterday it was my right ear. Sidebar, I tend to have this like underlying ringing <laughs> that I don't even really notice it a lot of the time until I settle down and I start to hear it. It's really low, but it's still high pitched. But I got like a spike in my left ear as I was talking about this. But someone had the epiphany long ago, is what I just heard. And is getting really anxious about the situation because of what they dealt with in the past. Okay? With the Three of Swords in reverse and the Seven of Pentacles in reverse. But this is part ego. I just heard ego. Ego is getting in the way here. But this is part of what's being released with the Seven of Wands and the Three of Wands. I'm sorry, the, the, the Ten of Wands in reverse. Yeah? But there really could be an energy of someone swooping in real swift, real swift, trying to deliver a message of truth and clarity. Um, surrounding the energies of this new moon. Okay. Wow, that was a lot. <laughs> so I'm going to quickly now, because we're 43 minutes in, I'm quickly just going to get our Oracle messages for the day. Starting with the Whispers of Love. The counterparts are coming together. You've got the Emperor and the Empress. That is crowning the reading right now. Oh, also underneath, I'm sorry guys, hold on. Underneath the deck in this clarifying section, we have the Queen of Swords. And I really feel like that this is energy that both of you are embodying, okay? Just cutting out things that no longer serve you. I really feel like this is overall energy for the whole reading, the Queen of Swords. That just makes perfect sense. Because it's cutting out everything that no longer serves you, cutting out the drama. There is a masculine energy here that wants commitment. Because if you guys could see at the very top of this reading here, what I was, uh, is the Knight of Wands, the King of Wands, and the Hierophant. The Knight of Wands to me is Sagittarian energy, yes, but also it's like the spiritual warrior, okay, a lot of the time, well, sometimes. But this is someone that really wants to rush in and it seems a little more stable because it's got the king and the, high, the king of wands and the hierophant. Okay, the king of wands is a little more commitment oriented than the knight, a little more. But then when you add it to the hierophant, this is like passionate, fiery commitment, like ready to go, ready to stay, ready to come in and ready to stay in. And this act of cutting out 
the wolves in sheep's clothing in your life, like I said before, is actively allowing the space for this person, this count, this this person. I want to say the counterpart to come in, because we are. This is a counterpart situation. We have the emperor and the empress. We've got the king and the queen of pentacles. Okay. All right. Cool. <clears throat> now let's get to the oracle section. All right, you guys. Here we go. Best messages, please, Spirit. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Spirit. Best messages, Thursday, November 8th, 2018. Woo! There we go. Underneath the deck you've got, like attracts like. If you're looking for, or if you're longing for more love in your life, you need to be more loving. Okay, we're aligning with this vibration, guys. And how are you aligning with that vibration? How are you being loving towards yourself? By cutting out those that do not love you back. Those that are just handing you this page of cups situation. When you're a damn, a motherfucking queen. Okay? Cutting that shit out. And finally, your, your message here is appreciate this moment. Each and every situation has an opportunity to grow and find love. So use this time to find love within yourself, to love yourself deeper, to love yourself more. Okay? And then you will attract someone that can match you on that vibration. You just have to maintain it and not worry about it. Especially if you, you know you're you're stepping into this Queen of Pentacles <clears throat> energy. You know, you know, just stick stick to your vibration and you will get what the, the universe will deliver to you, to you that which is you seek. The universe is not in the process of telling people no. And that can really backfire on you. Because the universe is always gonna tell you yes. So be careful of what you wish for. Hello. <laughs> All right, closing message here from the Crystal Mandala Oracle. Thank you so much, Spirit. November 8th, 2018. Closing message, please, Spirit. There it is. The Vision, Archangel Michael and Lapis Lazuli. Look, girl, bruh, were we, were we not talking about cutting out, cutting shit out, and who is the best being to work with when you're cutting out the fluff, when you're queen of swords, queen of swords in that shit. Archangel Michael, y'all. Can I get it? A man. Archangel Michael and Lapis Lazuli, the vision. This is card number eight. Eight is a number of abundance. And actually, I've been working with this deck for so long, and this, this card has never, this is, has never come out. This is the first time this card has come out, and it's so cool. Okay. We bring you the gift of vision, an inspirational insight from which you shall derive energy, motivation, and a sense of purpose. You have many abilities and the capacity to do numerous things with your talent, time, and energy. We know your heart yearns for meaningful, fo focused purpose. You have things you want to accomplish, perhaps so many that at times you may feel as though you are attempting to live more than one life in this lifetime. We know you can benefit from a vision, something that integrates all you want to do into one unifying purpose. Even if you do not see how it is possible for all your talents and dreams to be woven into one master vision, we know that love makes all things possible according to its own creative intelligence and wisdom. The universe shall take care of the details and from the loving universal mind in accordance with divine timing and your own readiness, we shall gift you with your vision. That's so cool. I do want to read this paragraph. Your vision will not necessarily include details of steps to take at first, although that will come when you are ready to take the relevant steps. It can be like driving a car through a foggy night, seeing only the most immediate part of the road before you at any given time. Does that mean the road doesn't exist beyond what you can see? Of course not. It does, however, mean that although the vision gives you the equivalent of a destination, a sense of where you are headed, once you are on the journey, the road will not always be clearly visible beyond what you can do today. 
you could compare it to difference of you could compare it to the difference of being at the top of the mountain and seeing all before you and the compromised vision that has to occur as you descend from the peak to begin the journey. That's a beautiful message, guys. And it definitely resonates because, you know, you do have the moon here. And yes, this is talking about, you know, the new moon situation, but it also talks about concealment. That's like, that was my quartz. That does talk about concealment, okay? Not necessarily seeing clearly, not every seeing everything as it truly is. But thankfully, you do have the Ace of Swords. And here, not necessarily the Nine of Wands, but here, the Ace of Swords is the inner clarity to know what it is you want and the faith and hope to follow through with that. And the trust in the universe that the universe is guiding you in the correct place. Okay, guys. So there it is. That was a big reading. But a lot is happening. So... I'm glad those messages had a moment to come through. Thank you so much for tuning in. I love you all. I hope you all have a great day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow for our next cup of coffee. Yeah? Take care. Bye.